Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. A lot of people at this point know that Webster Hall is back in business. Woo. It is reopened. Mm -hmm. And the first guest that they got to grace their stage in the new Webster Hall... Daniel Webster. ...was Jay-Z... And uh, he brought out a bunch of special guests. Yep, not us. Not us. We were not in the building, and I, we got a lot of a lot of people hitting us up, like, "Oh my God, I can't believe it's the reels not there, or is it's the real there, or it's the reels got to be there," and we were not. No, but I think it's very big of us to admit that we were not there. It, w it wasn't like <laughs> you know, like, "Oh, I didn't want to go," <laughs> right. or like, "No, we were not. We were not in the building. We were actually sitting could here. Could have been there, but <laughs> had better things to do." No, the truth is that that we were not. And and it's okay that we were not. Yes. Right? This was... That's so brave. There's there's, there's so many reasons why, right? Like... Well, uh, I can think of one. We didn't have tuxedos? Or tickets. <laughs> Wait, you had to have tuxedos. You had to have tuxedos. I ran into Maul from the Joe Budden podcast, and he said that he was invited, mm -hmm. you know, to go along with his brother and his friends and everything. Yeah. But he had to wear a tuxedo if he wanted to go, and he took that. As like a diss? No, like they were playing a practical joke on him. <laughs> he they he was like, were. I the only people I saw that had to wear tuxes were on stage. No, 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 no. Law was wearing it, and Lenny was wearing it, and a lot of people upstairs were wearing. Fab wasn't wearing a tux. Fab was not right. Fab is one of us. Like he could or could not have been there, and he, you know. Yeah, but he was there. I he know was he was. Tux. No, don't complain. Okay. Remember, remember, Jeff. No, I when I they was go low at home. Yeah, we, when we when <laughs> we stay home. Yeah. <laughs> No, we so we were we were not in the building, and that's quite all right. Mm -hmm. Again, no, it, it, Jeff, it was fine. It's Remember. fine. It's fine. I'm I'm okay not being it's, there. It's totally fine. We were Whenever not in the Rock building. Whenever Rock Nation wants to update their mailing list, <laughs> I'll um, happily take that offer. But you know, it's okay. Like I was, <laughs> I was happy to be at home searching for people on Instagram Live. So that's that's the truth. It was, that's I'm I'm being completely serious. There were I was. Fine. That's right. Yeah. There's all these times when it's like, it's really nice that there's two of us mm -hmm. because one of us can, you know, send the image airplay onto our TV. Right. While the other one searches to find out who has the better angle to watch this this feed from. Yeah. But really, a lot of our friends were there. Koza, Niles G, Della, Jazz Poe, Fab, whoever was there. Yeah. Broadcasting from their phones. I like that you snuck Fab in there. You know. He was there. <laughs> he was there. He's, He's friend. verified. Friend of friend of the room. A verified friend. And, <laughs> and and we were watching. Well, listen. Shout out to Fab to begin with, but he had the worst angle. Update, also, up, update your phone, my guy. Yeah, you know. it was like a 1987, <laughs> like Tetris. Not great. We were like begging our friends who were there, like go live from your like no, it's modern not, phone. It's not begging if you send a text and you say, hey, can you go on live? <laughs> Uh, we hit our Fab. Friend. I would have told to get off of live. We, we, we hit Koza, mm -hmm. and because uh, we knew he had a great angle from where he was standing, mm -hmm. and so we switched the feed and put it up on the big TV. We're watching it, and all of a sudden, it just like stopped, and we were like, "No, no!" <laughs> like, like, because Koza stops after two minutes. <laughs> we we had to find another friend and then another friend who had good angles, had modern phones. Yeah, and we were telling everybody on Twitter, go yeah, find these people. Whatever. It was it was our pleasure, our to help service. Out. We we were the heroes. That's right, because Title wasn't live streaming it, so so we had to do Title's job. We gave we gave we gave directions <laughs> as to we were like we were like directors, mm -hmm. like camera oh, we were two. like traffic cops. Camera three. Yeah. So you're, you're making it seem like we were producers. We yeah, were not. No, no, no. Whatever. We were we were here. We were happy to enjoy it. And I think one of the best parts of the evening was seeing Cam and Jim on the same stage as Jay and everyone getting along and hugging and rapping each other's lyrics. And it was just honestly filled my heart. Yeah. That these are these are a bunch of guys who, as everyone knows, has a long history for whatever back in their twenties. And this was just some some grown men, positive, legendary shit. And in tuxedos. In tuxedos, that's right. And it was really cool. We got a heads up from a friend who we will not name who came over here on Friday. Yep. So the day before. Is that right? No. On we, came over here. He came over on a day and he told us that yeah. Cam and Jim were allegedly going to be coming out and we were like, Well, now we have to go. And so <laughs> we sent we sent a text to somebody at Rock Nation. We were like, Hey, 
just throwing this out there. <laughs> if you have any extra tickets, and we got like a form email back saying, yeah. well, good luck next a time. A form email on text. I mean, basically, yeah. right? And, like it was just and, like, and yeah, we were like, no, we were like. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And it really is. No, it is. It is. And actually, I ran into Elliot at that same HBO event the other day that I ran into Maul at. This was not a podcasters convention or anything. Well, this yeah, is just I wasn't there. So <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm saying, Jeff, that, you know, the the bosses linked up. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> yeah, me and <laughs> <You didn't, laughs> me and Rory stood outside <laughs> you trying to your, bum our way in. You didn't in. have your tuxedo, you know? Yeah. And I was talking to Elliot as bosses do. Real boss talk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Elliot was like, Elliot was like, hey man, I really, have, Elliot and his friend. Oh. You know. So any, uh, who was Elliot's <laughs> friend? <laughs> Jeff, I can't say, but we were all was there. Was it Joe Budden? I can't, I can't we were all there. Just, was it Andrew Schultz? Just, you know, politicking. Uh -huh. And uh, Charlemagne and the God? We were just, we were just. Rosenberg? Working out details, Scythe? you know, it's, it, there's levels, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm on level the help. <laughs> yeah. I was in there, I was talking to Elliot, and he said that what we are great at is just is just being in rooms, right? We don't have to stand out or or make a scene or or put a lot of effort in to be something we're not. Mm -hmm. And the fact that just like when I was at the um the bun and static recording and I just sort of stood in the corner and stayed there and didn't, you know, try to sort of overexert myself or or put myself into situations where I didn't need to be. Honestly, I, and I think I, I can speak for you too, it's it's a pleasure to take all of this in, right? Yeah. So if you're in the building, wonderful. If you're at home on the couch watching, wonderful too. It meant more to us to see Cam and Jim and Jay on that stage together than it would have been if we were standing on the stage with them. That's not true. No, no I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm severely that is, mad that, that we were is, not there. That and, is some cap. And goddamn. Jeff, today on the podcast. Today on the podcast, we have Toby. Toby from Toronto. Toronto, not Toronto, and definitely not New Hampshire. No, uh, Toby is a, a singer. Actually, before he was a singer, he was a battle rapper. and Which is nuts. Not that anybody can't go from being a battle rapper to a singer, but... Well, I think that's nuts, by the way. Because name the other ones who have done that. Uh, that's right. So <laughs> Toby is hold on very <laughs> singular in Joe that. Budden. He has well, he could do that. Yeah, Joe could do that, and also he Cassidy did, has not sung, but you should. Girl, you wanna come to my hotel? <laughs> not him. You you wanna Canceled. bring me back? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you should stop the Joe Button. You should stop the Joe Button. Carry yourself, girl. So and I won't get with you because you're Toby. There so, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Toby is. A very talented dude who's been co-signed by everybody from the game to Jamie Foxx. Hi, Mae Foxx. To <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, yeah. Taylor Rooks. Um, a whole bunch of other people. And us. We deserve credit for that. He is dropping a new album coming up later this week, mm -hmm. which I should probably know the name of. Right? It's called Toby Lou and the Groovy Two. <laughs> That's not what it's called. It's called... Sincerely, Toby. That's not what it's called. Toby writes letters from the war. That's not the one. It's called Toby Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers. Almost. It's called Still. <laughs> well, you want to know what? Toby, his new album, Still, which drops on Friday, I believe, through our friends over at Same Plate. Woo! Shout out to everybody over there, John and Alex and on down the line, and Toby. Toby. Shout out to Toby. From Toronto. It's from Toronto. So not Toronto. <laughs> not, not New Hampshire. <laughs> really <laughs> talented dude. Really genuine dude. You get a lot about his music. You get a lot about his journey. You get a lot about his athletics and, and, and his education and who he is as a person, as we do on this podcast. Very excited for this episode. I know you guys will be as well. You've heard all of these people who we put on, like... Cardi and Lil Uzi Vert and Tierra Wack and, and our mom, our mom, and nobody had heard about our mom before. That us. is true, but today you're gonna hear from Toby. And shout out to all you guys for listening. Also, we just hit 500 ratings on iTunes. Hey, big day! Big day! So make sure you guys add to that so we can celebrate this once more. Jeff, when do you want to get into this episode? Right after people do the thing on iTunes. So did when? you do it? Oh, did you do it? I believe I did do it. Well, no, I'm I'm sort of doing like that Scott Rogowski thing where it's like, hey, you <laughs> out there. You're talking to the crowd. 
listening to the podcast. Jeff, when you want to get into hey, this? <laughs> you listening to the pod? Jeff. Go on iTunes and review so I can save my job <laughs> right now. <laughs> Yo, what up? It's Eric, aka Flat Soda, aka No Cap. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, aka All I Need Is One Mic, aka Toon Squad. Yo, what up? It's Toby, aka Young Leo, not DiCaprio, but Tolstoy <laughs> and Da Vinci. Let's get it. Yeah, it's your third favorite podcast to waste the time when it's the real. <laughs> Toby, what's happening? <laughs> I'm blessed, man. That was great. Yo, uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Uh, you are just mere hours into your visit here in New York. How's it going so far? Yeah, it's been going well so far. Uh, my lift took 15 minutes longer than they were supposed to from the airport. To show up or to actually transport you? No, to show up because they had to make two laps around. That's always crazy to me, by the way. It's like you're watching them just like diss you, you know? It's just really unfortunate. One oh, yeah. star. Yeah, one <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to start. Oh. Well, by the way, are you afraid to rate them? I am because they rate you back. Yeah, but so, they, don't, they don't see the rating before they rate you, though. Is that right? No. I'm, I'm always concerned. We were in Los Angeles a couple weeks ago, mm. and... We took an Uber to meet our friend downtown, Abigail. Abigail, and on our way there, the Uber driver almost got into an accident twice. I think. Yep. Flipped somebody off. Yep. Stopped the car and yelled at the other people. Yep. They threw a cabbage back. Yeah. Hit the window. Yeah. And then the guy stopped his car, came out, and started yelling at our driver. And our driver was sort of racist yeah so it was all weird but yeah. he was like he looked back to us for support and we were just like silent we were yeah. just like looking back like w what and then he goes all right <laughs> like, like we then, heard his feelings yeah and then almost got into another accident and then said everybody's crazy tonight and then dropped us off so in that scenario oh. i was like I, I don't even know what to do and our friend abigail was just like don't rate him at all just move on with your life and so that is what i've done Hopefully I'm not like at a 2.8 or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'd go with Abigail's yeah. advice. <laughs> Facts. I would go with her advice. You are signed to Same Plate Entertainment. Our friends over there were good enough to send your music on to us uh, maybe two months ago. Okay. Maybe three months ago. And uh, let me tell you that as far as like young people in this game, your music from what I heard was significantly above and beyond anything that we've heard lately. So wow. congratulations to you on making the music. And how do you feel being signed to a major record label ready to sort of blow? And this is, by the way, before Jamie Foxx said things, before right, like right. other people of Tiffany note, Haddish, yeah. you know, it's the real, whatever. Yeah. Before people of <laughs> note uh, said things, you're, you're just putting out music that you feel good about and, and it just gets to the right places. How do you feel? I feel grateful. For one, I got to be grateful for everything. Uh, take it all in stride. Uh, but also, this is something I've been preparing for for a long time. I've been making music for so long. So to finally have something out into the world and have a great team to push it for me, it, uh, it means everything. And I'm, uh, I'm extremely, extremely motivated and excited for what's to come. And uh, I just hope people are ready. I hope you all are ready when I come in this. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So let's go back to the very beginning. Where are you originally from? I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. All right. And how long did you spend down there? I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. I lived there for eight years. All right. So long enough to like, you know, establish yourself as a human being. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up down there? It was a, a myriad of things. I can try and explain as best as I can right now. I mean, but that I is the have... point of a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet, bet, bet. Okay. <laughs> I just don't want to get too long-winded, but it no, is No, let's go, yeah. So I do have a lot of memories imprinted in my brain. Uh, the language, you know, my second language is Yoruba. That's mm -hmm. my uh, cultural language aside from English. Uh, I remember, you know, the teaching system in school. You know, I remember like the cultural nuances. I remember the restaurants, like the Western influence on everything. And uh, I think growing up now I could recontextualize things and understand what it really meant. Mm -hmm. Although at the time I was just a participant. Yeah. But now I'm an observer and I can look back on it and, you know, have that influence my music right now. Big family? Um, no, it's like a decent sized family, five people. 
And where do you fall in between your siblings? I am the oldest. You're the oldest. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have what? A brother, a sister, two sisters? I have two younger sisters. Okay. And I have, uh, I also have an older brother, a okay. uh, half brother. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would consider myself the oldest because I was with them until about 16 years old. And then I met my oldest brother. Who makes the best Joe off? <laughs> Oh man, none of us. <laughs> I'll be thorough with you. None of us. Um, yeah, I, when I want jollof rice, I go to the restaurant that's like twenty minutes from my home. But I do want to learn though. But growing up down there, um, are you playing sports? Are you doing any extracurricular activities? Like, who are you by the time you're, you know, essentially in second grade? Yeah, playing sports, playing soccer on the streets all day. Yeah, you know, it's just. It's Were just you nice with it? Super nice. Super. I'm still kind of nice. All right. I'm still kind of nice. Prove it right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> if you guys do want to play, yeah. just let me know. <laughs> just let me know. When my foot is all healed up, we can do it. Oh, and that sounds like a good excuse. Yeah, when no, my foot exactly. is all healed up. Yeah, I know. That's like, that's like I'm dating a girl. She doesn't go to our school. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so when does music enter your life then? When I was in Nigeria, I'd, um, I was surrounded by music. Um, not not like my family playing or being musicians, but they always listen to music at home. So we listen to like um, West African music, Afrobeat music, Fela Kuti, uh, Magic System, King Sunny Ade, you know. Um, David O, Wizkid. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wizkid, the... Wizkid was popping when I was like six years old. What? That was the first... No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like... I was like, oh, maybe like this actually, maybe he's much older. Maybe, uh, you know, black don't crack. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. just like an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did you take any like any classes for music? Were you, was it a no. part of your schooling at that point? No. Okay. No. What uh, does it feel like then when your family's like, hey, like we're going to, you're going to move. So what happened was when we were told we were going to move, I had like two weeks notice and it was just me who moved. Me and my father. Yeah. What, what, what happened? I don't know the details. Yeah. Till this day, I don't know the details of why exactly we moved. Did All you, I know is I was told, <laughs> we're moving. Well, did, did they say, hey, we're moving to a whole nother continent? Essentially, yeah. Okay. So uh, one-way plane ticket. Yeah. And uh, pack your bags. Exactly. So you take a, a flight to Toronto? I took a flight to Connecting Flight. Uh, went to London and then we went to Ottawa. How prepared were you for cold? Yeah, yeah. Not prepared at all. My jacket wasn't a real jacket. You know, it was what like was a, it? It was like a, a tarp. <laughs> yeah, it was like a it was like a it was like a windbreaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was well, like so you step off that terrible. plane. What do you think, Ottawa? First of all, we landed on March first. So really nice weather. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was freezing cold. It was like you know. Little snowflakes and all that good stuff. But was but that yeah, exciting it to you? I didn't have any feelings. I was indifferent, mm -hmm. you know. But I also thought maybe we this wouldn't be permanent. Like it'd be temporary. Oh, like it's a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. But it like wasn't. A short <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, well, so was not. did you uh, put your roots down in Ottawa? No, that was also a temporary stay. Okay. There was a lot of temporary business for the next couple of years. And wh so where do you really settle down then? So after that, I moved to Toronto. Mm -hmm. I lived in Toronto. Then the rest of my family came. And then we moved to a suburb called Brampton. Right. Yes. And, and Brampton is the route. That's where we... You know, a lot of people seats. from Brampton. Yeah, among others. Well, yeah, I was gonna be like, just generally, lots of people. Yeah, from lots Brampton. of people from there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I also like Jesse Reyes, mm -hmm. um, um, Alessia uh, Cara. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of talented, Lanes. a lot of talented people mm -hmm. come from there. Was it an easy transition for you to grow up in Brampton? It was because Brampton is so multicultural. It's so diverse. Okay, we knew Toronto was. We didn't yeah. know about Brampton. Okay, when I lived in Toronto. I don't know if it was a government program or something like that, but they made housing affordable for a lot of immigrants, a lot of people who didn't own homes. So a lot of people moved to Brampton around the same time that I did. So it was kind of like, you know, you leaving your home here, but moving with all your friends to this new city. So Brampton was, uh, yeah, it was like a, it was like a haven. It was like a haven for new families, for newcomers, for young families. Like it was... Yeah, it was, a, it was a very great time. So sure. what's it like going into the schooling system 
now in Brampton. In Nigeria at the time, they were kind of ahead of the Canadian system. As far as like math goes, they were way ahead. Um, English was on par. So when I came in, I was like a year younger than everybody else in my grade. Age wise. Yeah. But schooling, you're ahead. Yeah, schooling, I was ahead by like two grades. Whoa. For at least for math, which was kind of trippy. But in Nigeria, it's just kind of like, you got to learn this. Well, so how does that sort of uh, work its way out? Like, do do kids like not understand what you're dealing with? And does, does your teacher not understand what you're dealing with? And for you, you're ahead. How Are you like trying to reach for something else? Or are you like, you know, going in there every day being like, cool, I'll do this rudimentary stuff. It was, it was like really easy. The schoolwork was easy, but the other stuff was hard, you know, like recess. You know what I mean? Social situation. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Understanding like what this means or, you know, what does this phrase mean or just little things like that. Well, like, what phrases? Oh, like the first time I heard something like, this is cool. I was like, cool. <laughs> what does that mean? This is cool. But it just means something that's, you know. Yeah. Cool. That's all right. Now, yeah. now that I know what cool means, it's like, it is what it is. But to a newcomer, I'm just like, what the f- yeah. What are you guys talking about, you know? So how long do you think it took you to sort of really get your feet settled and and know that you were amongst friends and, you know, going out to the movies or go to the mall or just be a regular kid? That took a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it took a really long time. Um, but fortunately enough, when I moved to Brampton, because it was so diverse, then it was easier because there were other people in my shoes as well. Were there other kids from Nigeria or just other kids who had just like emigrated from other places? Yeah, just other places. There's a lot of South Asians, Filipinos, um, Caribbean, Jamaicans. Um, yeah, it's a, it a huge melting pot. What's something you took from somebody else's culture and you brought it home and their, your parents were just like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so when I was in high school, I used to hang out with everybody, like from all sorts of different cultures especially the Filipinos. They love me for some reason. I don't know Shouts why. Shouts to all of them. Yeah. Much love to the Filipinos. And um, yeah, they just used to put me on like their, their different uh, foods and things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, I'd bring that home, like the ube cake. I don't know if you know what that is. Mm-mm. No, it's I got to get to Brampton. I know, yeah. It's fire. The purple yam. Oh, shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I've seen the mm-hmm. emoji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, so yeah. when so, so when you would hear Drake go into like this sort of patois, like it's sort of just understood that oh he grew up with kids who were like talking like that, and that's just a part of his everyday life from being around Toronto. Absolutely, also, everybody speaks patois. Do you have an issue when people like us pronounce it Toronto? It's really minus the second T or something like that. It's like Toronto, Toronto, what? Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Toronto, Toronto. <laughs> There's no t- the T is silent. The second T is silent. Is that like saying Arkansas instead of Arkansas? <laughs> yeah. I guess. Or actually, yeah. there's like Nevada. That oh, is yeah. how it's properly pronounced. Yeah, and I say Nevada. Yeah, uh, opposed to it. No, Nevada. Yeah, it's like it's, it's Nevada, Nevada or Nevada or Oregon or Oregon. Right. By the way, we get angry at silly things, oh. too, when people are just like, they spell our name I-T apostrophe S space T-H-E space R-E-A-L. Right, right, right. It's just one word, no apostrophe, no spaces, you know? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. I just learned that, actually. Right now? <laughs> well, not right, not right now. Like, when I was trying to search for it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the space... What's going on? People get us confused, strangely enough, for the uh, the women's talk show, The Real. Yeah. But meanwhile, that's not us. No, yeah. but shouts to Adrienne Bailon. Yep, yep. Shouts to... Does she have a new name now? Whoa. Yeah, sorry. I have a package, I guess, coming right, right now. All right, hold on. This has, like, never happened before. Hey. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so growing up uh, in in Toronto, what kind of music entered your life that was uh, new and inspiring? And, and well, hold on, don't you hate that even though he knows not to say the second T in Toronto? Yeah, he just did it, and you just yeah, did it did. as well. Well, I, well I, I am ruthless. I'm, I'm savage. I don't give a fuck. Right. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's get it. Then. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I, I do, I do work on saying like Montreal, not Montreal. You know? Yeah, but that just sounds like a herb. What was the the difference? I didn't hear it. Montreal and Montreal. Mm. How do you say it? He doesn't. Montreal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Don't talk about them. Toronto. Growing up in Toronto. Yeah. 
what was it like in terms of music? Where where did you find your inspiration? Um, in Toronto is definitely hip hop, hip hop primarily. And of course, there's dance hall, you know, soca, um, music from the Caribbean islands, right? And also music from Africa as well. But also hip hop was the predominant music that I listened to growing up. So like who? I listened to a lot of 90s East Coast hip hop. Yep. Um, LOX. Yeah. Jay-Z. Yep. Street Family. Yeah. You know, um, the lyrical stuff. But I also listened to Outkast. I also listened to Outkast a lot. Dungeon Family, Goody Mob, uh, Houston. So how does all this music find its way to you, though? Because is like... Are, you know, the locks, RJ and Outkast, and every, is that on the radio up there? In Toronto, we only had one hip hop station, like growing up. To this day, I'm pretty sure that's that major station is the only one that works hip hop. Um, and we just, we just listened to whatever was on there. But also, you know, the internet, YouTube was, you know, YouTube came out in what, 2006? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was when I first got into high school. So, you know, that was big with me and my friends, just like putting each other on new stuff. You mean old stuff? Yeah. <laughs> or, or or old stuff. But to us, to me, to me it was new. Yeah. You know, like the Jordan Tower stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the Philly, the Philly battles, the yeah. Philly freestyles, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I used to be deep into that. I used to watch that all day and all night. Because you were just interested in it or because you wanted to do that? Because uh, I wanted to be like them. You wanted to battle rap? Yeah. Well, yeah. did you? I did. Really? Yeah. Like, who? What, what, it was well, like what? high school battle raps. Like in Brampton, like I said, because it was so diverse, we all just, like we made a culture in Brampton of of rappers, right? So we would battle people from other schools, you know, put it on, put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube. Like video it. Put yeah. it on World Star. Like where, but when yeah. it turned left. How would you organize this? You're not just riding around in a car, like looking for people and being like, stop, like, let's go battle them. Yeah, yeah. Or no, did you? Wait, did yeah, that. did you? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's not, not a good idea. No. It's a very one sided battle if you pull up on somebody and they don't rap. You were just yeah, like, exactly. your shoes are whack. And then just like <laughs> jump back in the car. Although it'd be a great video. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but how, how do you find other people who are willing to battle you? Do you just hear about it and you're like, yo, we'll pull up on your school? That's it. It's the word of mouth. And we had this group called Put It on the Mic. It's a long name. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. 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 But that was the name of the group. And this was in the early days of uh, Facebook yeah. when MySpace was kind of dying out. Yep. Um, so then people would just post videos and be like, yo, like challenge this school, challenge this school. And we kind of had these rivalries coming up. What did your parents think or did they know anything about your battle rap career as a high schooler? Yeah, they knew it. They hated it. They knew about it. Yeah, absolutely. You would tell them. You would be like, yo, I'm going out tonight and I'm going to go kill people. No, <laughs> nah, not like that. I'm um, going to murder them lyrically. They were like, oh, Toby's got his uh, his his one sweatshirt on. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he wears when he goes out to go battle <laughs> oh, people. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. True. No, no, no. It was nothing like that. Um, my parents my parents worked in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, were, they worked in social services. So my dad went to work one day. And one of the youths that he was counseling was like, hey, do you know your son does this? And your dad's like, what? <laughs> and my dad said, that's not my son. <laughs> of course. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was but, like, pretty severe yeah, yeah. response, dad. Just, hey. Yo, yo. If your dad was a battle rapper, that'd be a great diss. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But so, some do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. So, you, wait, wait, wait. so he comes home <laughs> and he talks to you and says, I just found out that you battle rap. And you're like, Yeah. Yeah. What happened then? I mean, it's like, it's an awkward conversation, you know, because, you know, ultra conservative, that's not a thing. Right. You know, what are you doing? Right. Why are you embarrassing these kids on the internet? Why are you publicly disgracing them with your lyrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I'm, come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> what else am I going to do? Right, right, wow, right. You, were, I'm you, were, so, you I'm were a cloud chaser. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what else? No, I mean, like, what else am I gonna do? Like, I'm killing it in school. Yeah, yeah. let me have fun. Yeah, let you were doing do it for the likes. Do. What do you yeah. think your parents? No, nah, 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 What nah. do you think your parents wanted you to do for a career at that point? Probably like med school mm-hmm. or be a lawyer. Or something. Yeah, and you were not gonna do that. 
Um, no, I actually did want to go to med school. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So this really was just for fun at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're, you're a battle rapper. Are you recording like actual songs like 16s versus like the whole thing? Yeah. I started that like middle of high school. Yeah. Started recording songs. Yeah. In groups or just by yourself? By myself. And were you Toby? No. Who were you? I don't even know if I can divulge these. No, names. Uh, if, first of all, you absolutely yes, can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And if, if J. Cole can, like, you know, be yeah. J. Cole and he started out as therapist, therapist or as it was seen on MySpace, the, the rapist. rapist, yeah, then you can tell us what your name was. Yeah. I mean, therapist is kind of a dope name, though. First of all, no, it's, no, it's, that's it's, very, it's really it's not. It's very kind of you, but no. Like, I don't know if you yeah. saw the NBA All Star game, but that was not the therapist up there. Like, <laughs> no. Oh, no, or, no, or I didn't see it. Not or, the therapist. Therapist, therapist yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, basically, I I just used to name myself after like dangerous things, you know, like poison ivy, you know, um, lyrical. It's like mm -hmm. lyrical, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. the calico. Sure. Yeah. 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 Just stuff like that, you know. Um, tech yeah. rhymes. That was one of them too. <laughs> so There's so many names. Yeah. <laughs> slippery one wet. <laughs> 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 it's very dangerous yeah 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 right yeah, so yeah. so um slippery and wet yeah, yeah that's what oh that's hard yeah right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's um, a bon jovi album yeah, i know <laughs> so at that point in your life you're you're just out here and your art is in battle rapping yeah when do you sort of take it to a level where you're like i have a story to tell and it's not necessarily based upon putting someone else down yeah i think that was like the natural progression from doing battle rap and just, you know, the purpose of it was to annihilate your opponent to mm -hmm. a point where it was like, let me try actually putting bars to a beat and, uh, you know, creating these concepts that I've already done for so long. Because when I moved to Canada at eight, I used to write poetry. Mm. I just used to write poetry, but I never thought about putting it on a song. It was just, it was just poetry to me. And then um, a friend actually, a friend of mine in high school was like, man, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this out? So we used to record songs on my, uh, on his Sony Ericsson phone. Whoa. And then we'd uh, like import it into Audacity and then just make songs for ourselves. Yeah. When and so like, obviously people knew that you were writing poetry. So I mean like. How no, many, no one knew. But he knew. He knew. He was my boy. He was my yeah. best yeah, yeah. friend. Yeah. So what did it mean to, to put music out? Even though it was just for yourself. Right you had an intended audience out there. So, so talk about that switch. Actually, I wasn't even putting it out. I was just making it to listen to it. For really? Myself. Yeah. Well, so how like nerve wracking was it to like play it for like someone who didn't know then? Oh yeah, it was nerve wracking. Would you like, you, you had it like on your iPod or something like that and you played it like for them just Or do you of. do it like an Uber driver does mm. where it's just like you have it on the background. You're like, oh, who, who is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually funny yeah. um <laughs> one star yeah yeah right um for me it's always been organic like i don't for I, I never force myself onto people it's just like if you're here if you happen to take this in here it is this is me right here some people heard it and they're like yo you actually got something here like do more who it. was that person who who heard it and really felt it just some of my boys in high school and you listened i did you were like all right i took heed and I just kept working at it. When was the first time you performed live? Um, in high school, um, maybe like 11th grade. Like a talent show? No, or? it was this, it's this class that we have called um, Civics and Careers. I don't know if you, you have it here. Um, essentially, you basically, you learn about the government system in civics. And mm -hmm. then in careers, you learn about occupations and what you might want to do after school. So we had to do one. I had to make a song for um, victim services, like people who had been like abused. So I just used the poem that I'd written and I performed it over Nas's one mic. People loved it. And I was like, yo, let's do this. Did you lyrically take down the abusers? Good question. For a couple bars. Yeah, 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 yeah a yeah. couple bars, yeah. 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 Well, actually, yeah. wait, what is, the, what is your best line that you had when you were like, the the lyrical assassin critic lyrical yeah, lyrical y'all don't want to hear this <laughs> y'all want to hear this yeah absolutely yeah. jeez <laughs> let me see oh man i had this one verse i still think about it to this day i'm like what was i thinking with this one um it was like uh um 
I got the Mac 11 brethren start hitting their face. Break to the head, pieces of brain all over the place. Then I wrap it up like it's the BT program. Knife game R&B hit you with a slow jam. Type of dude to, stab, to snap and start breaking heads off. Pencil 9mm spark and let off. Aim two is at the same time. I spray nine and nine cats all using the same nine. I'm the type of kid who could tote and tote. Multiply my bread, divide your face, subtract your throat. Add my money to pay for the funeral. Outline the body in chalk covered in chemical. Yeah, it was pretty serious. Hold on. That, you're the same person? I know. Yeah, right. I know, man. I know. I know. That's why it's a, that's why it's a growing process. This divide is a growth process. Yeah, divide the throat and and then I did this. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Divide, yeah. Um, today, do you still have those like, um, uh, like Styles P feelings? <laughs> nah, man. I just listen to Holiday. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, okay, you perform in eleventh grade in this civics class, and how was it received? It got a standing ovation. And what'd you think? I was like, what? I just wrote this last night, like. This is wild. In that moment where you're like, maybe this is my my path forward, or were you still like, I'll go into medical school, I'll have this, you know, path that like yeah, my parents see for practical me. Practical sort of Yeah. Definitely the latter. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So this is just something you have in your back pocket. It's for fun. And and maybe you'll keep doing it as a hobby. Yeah. Except it was a very obsessive hobby, but yeah. Obsessive how? Like I did it every waking moment of the day. Writing, recording, performing. Yeah, the writing. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. What is the first song that you write that you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to put this out on YouTube, on SoundCloud, somehow get it out and just see what people beyond your social circle think. Uh, yeah, so I put out a song when I was in like 12th grade. I got this beat on SoundClick. And I just recorded it. I paid maybe like 40 bucks for some studio time. And I created the song. I put it out on YouTube. I was like, let's do this. What was that song called? Uh, it was called All I Know. It was like, uh, it, it, it sounds like, if you remember Wiz Khalifa Say Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in that vein. Okay. Yeah. What is it like to be in the studio for the first time? It, w it, wasn't, it wasn't like a difficult thing because I had been doing it at home on the Sony Ericsson. Of course, that's my made up studio. And now this is like, you know, on the same level. <laughs> They've got their own Sony Ericsson. That's right. Right, right, right. You just yeah. rap into that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the same thing. Like the, the equipment is upgraded a little bit, yeah. but my technique is the same. So that's what it is. And who did you bring with you? I went solo. Solo to the studio. Yeah. And then did the engineer like say anything to you like, hey, that was good? Or did they say nothing and you were just like, can I get my files? Or like, you know, what, what did, what was that like? I know that I fell in love as soon as I stepped in the studio and I was, you know, I was rapping to the mic, you know, it was a Samson CO2. Um, I was like, I got to come back here. So I kept coming back to this guy's crib. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was so, somebody's, somebody's house? Yeah, it was his house. It oh. was a home studio. Gotcha. And then he's, he just stopped asking me to pay. Wow. He's just like, just keep coming. He just believed in, in you. Yeah. That's dope. Who yeah. is this guy? Um, his name was uh, D Pride. Do you know that is? Well, yeah. I do know D Pride. For sure. Yeah. yeah. His, name wa his name was D Pride. It's not D Pride anymore. Right. He was a rapper. Yeah. 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 Totally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, he's from Brampton too. Yeah. So Everybody's from put, Brampton. Yeah. yeah, there's so many Listen, people from Brampton. The history is rich, man. Yeah, yeah. it's rich. It's a rich history. Wait, what's something about Brampton that that nobody knows, or that like you know, people from Brampton know? I guess. <laughs> I don't want you to be like you know. There was a chemical spill. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> <laughs> it's slippery. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's why uh, you know there's so many fire artists from there as a yeah. mutation. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know something about Brampton that no one knows. I don't know. Like from the outside, it just looks boring, but it's actually popping. It's actually kind of lit. Well, I mean, like what's there? Um, houses, <laughs> uh, gas stations. Um, but at the time when I was in high school, it was like we had like all ages clubs. We had artists from the States coming in there. We had Tyga come and do some shows there. Wow. Um, the new Wait, boys. Was, was it, yeah. was it yeah. Tyga at a high point or at a low point or like at a now point? <laughs> Nah, this was Tyga when he was like fresh with Young Money. Okay, mm. I think he just did the Bedrock verse. Mm. That's so, so this was, is like a, 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 you know pre-Rack City. Yeah, yeah, it's pre-Rack City. Yeah. And pre you fuck with the New Boys? 
Well, at the, yeah. at the time, your the jerk, jerk was popular. The jerking movement was crazy yeah. in Brampton. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, they came and they had a show. They, like, sold it out. Everyone was going nuts. Who was your favorite of the new boys? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. Every single one. Yeah, that's the right answer. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. So you graduated high school. I did. And and what's the plan immediately afterwards? You got your summer, and then you're going to go to college? Yeah, university. Okay. Did you bring your musical talents to university? I did. And how was it received? Where would you play? What would you do? I brought it to university, but I wasn't trying to be like, hey, I'm the new rapper on campus. You know, I was like, no, I got to get my... I got to get my degree. You know, this is what I came here for. You know, this is what my parents worked so hard to get me here for. So it was like that. But then, you know, I would still be writing music in between lectures, things like that. Rapping about killing people. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd, I'd throw that shit away by that point. Like, that shit, it was over. It was over. When do you sort of pull that out of your bag? Like, what, what, is, what is the moment where you're like, okay, I'm going to perform and people are going to be like, oh, I didn't realize that you were a musician also. Yeah, it was um, it was an organic process. Um, <clears throat> I started getting involved with different things, like different leadership opportunities. And then one of them was like the group had to create a chant or a song or something like that. And everybody was having a difficult time. And I'm a, and I was scribbling something while they were brainstorming. And then I was, and then I showed them and they're like, oh, shit. This is this is dope. They this were like, like "Why didn't you chance? tell us this three hours ago?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> After everyone was like, "Oh, like pulling hair and shit like that," so I, and then I did it for them, and then they're like, "All right, let's. This is it right here." And then someone went to go tell everybody that I did it, and then people kept asking me to like write songs for them and stuff like that. So I was like, "Let's do it. Let's get it." You were a ghostwriter. Well. I, I guess, yeah. yeah. You, could, you could look at it that <laughs> or way. Or a yeah. co-writer, whatever, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but for like school spirit anthems, you know what I mean? Were you the guy who turned every single assignment into like one of a... Facts. Like, oh, like wow. a music project? You're like, hey, what, what, if, what if instead of like writing an essay, we just like <laughs> did a song? Yes, yes. <laughs> and people were on board. I had a prof who loved that idea so much. Actually, he'd been doing it, mm -hmm. and I purposely took his class because one of the final assignments was a music video. Uh, you were a pre-med student? No. Oh, okay. I did a <laughs> biology <laughs> No, because I was like, you're turning surgery into a music video? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um, it is It is dangerous, so... <laughs> yeah. That fits in with... Word. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Dad, that's the thing. That's the thing of my life, actually. Yeah. And by the way... Scalpel. Yeah, you can safely use scalpels in the emergency room. Yeah. You know, to... to divide someone's throat. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yo, man. Oh, man, I regret <laughs> <laughs> Hey, gang. It's Jeff and Eric here from the podcast. Hello. That's right. It's us, <laughs> the guys you were just listening to for 40-something minutes. That's right. And have we got a special offer for you today? Today and today only, you can go to our website, itsthereal.com, and sign up for our newsletter for free. Today and today only? Yeah, after today, we start charging. Oh, okay. So and not only do we start charging, but we start charging a lot. It's Arms, <laughs> legs, but you're saying all this. it's in people's interest to go to itsthereal.com today and sign up for our newsletter where they can find out about all of our new merch, all of our touring, all things that go on in our lives. That's not all. You can also find out what's happening in our apartment. Hey, what new things did I buy that I am now decorating my room with? I like that. Yeah. Where can I go to sign up for this, Jeff? It's the real dot com. I T S T H E R E A L dot com. C O M <laughs> com. As in, come get this newsletter. And now back to Toby. Dot com. You start doing these assignments, but are you still taking time to record original music for yourself? Absolutely. Had you changed your name, your style? Like, had you had you figured out who you were going to be at that point, or was this all? It was part of the process. Yeah, I didn't figure it out. Still, really haven't figured it out. What? To, what today? Like who I'm going to be? Yeah. Well, it's a growing process. Yeah. For me, that's the way I look at it. Like I have uh, aspiration of an ideal, which I'm working towards. Sure. Yeah. While you're in school, though, what is the type of music that you're putting together? It's definitely more melodic by this point, but I'm still coming with songs where it's like 50 bars, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what I that's what I really love doing at the time was just going in on a beat and just going for a, a wild amount of bars but there's definitely now there are more melodic stylings to it you know a little more singing a little more 
playing around on the beat. You know? Yeah. At that time, so you're going to school. Uh, this is post Drake. This is, I mean, like you know, Drake had already like popped off. Yeah. And so, what did that mean to see somebody from Toronto, like, from where? Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> um, what did it mean for for somebody who was like so close to to sort of like just blow up, like right before your eyes? Yeah, it was remarkable. It was it was um, unheard of. It hadn't happened before so he definitely opened the floodgates for other artists from toronto did you watch degrassi growing up i did that's it <laughs> <laughs> i did you know yeah. spinner jimmy everyone yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like was it weird to watch this kid just become like you know a rapper after that or were you just like i mean they, they sort of integrated him into the show or something like that right they did but they didn't give him like they didn't give him like like bars you know what I mean? when i heard him rapping i'm like yo this guy actually is sick like mm -hmm. he's holding his own on the track with malice he had a song with malice yeah. from the clips yeah i'm like this guy's amazing let's well, get it what's your favorite drake project my favorite drake project um okay ah man i got oh man nothing was the same mm -hmm. take care mm-hmm and if you're reading this, it's too late. Mm. Yeah. And what it's about... Probably if you're reading this, it's too late. That's my favorite. Did you go to uh, any of the the OVO shows? Uh, OVO Fest? Yeah. Yeah, I went to the one with where Nas came out. Wow. I think that was in 2012 or 2011. Wow. I didn't even buy a ticket, actually. I worked at the amusement park beside it, and I snuck in. Whoa. I'll be thorough with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's dope. dope. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> So, uh, was were people still like you weren't like managing one of the rides, were you? Like, the, nah. Okay, just making sure nobody was like stuck on the Ferris wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> while you nah, were going to enjoy Nas right for back. three yeah, hours. Yeah. yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I, I wouldn't do. Ah, maybe I would. No, I wouldn't. Also, do you're that. a taller dude. It's not hard for you to uh, to be seen. Mm -hmm. And you just like hop the fence and and uh, yeah, snuck in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't even have to hop a fence because I had a I had one of those passes for the grounds. Oh, you just showed it I, and I just quick flash, went right through. Slide, mm -hmm. smart man, <laughs> smart slide. man. You Sir. does the 10th anniversary of so far gone mean as much to you as it meant to so many people online absolutely do you know where you were when it when it dropped yeah i was in high school um i was in 11th grade and um it was essentially like the soundtrack you know every time you know all these stories you could relate to them for one and it was the first time that you could listen to a hip hop artist, at least for me and my friend group, you can listen to a hip hop artist and be like, wow, he's talking about a location that we actually know. You know, he's describing a scenario that we've been in. And, you know, you can listen to it with your girl, you know. Just so Cardinal wasn't like shouting out places in Toronto. Like, what? He was. He definitely was. So he's, you know, he's the progenitor of that. Yeah. Drake took it to a next level though he took it to a next level because there are the nuances to it you know like like a street name you know or an event mm -hmm. or he'd like, be like oh, oh like you know sally from future shop or like you know <laughs> like um donna from tim hortons <laughs> or <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or well, or a mood. Yeah. You yeah. know, he get the mood and but, you're like, "Oh, I feel that." But did it did it uh, evoke something when he shot the music video for like Headlines at uh Rogers Center, whatever it's called, right? Or mm -hmm. it used to be Sky Dome, but what is it now? Uh Rogers Center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that was that meaningful? Uh well, for me at the time, I was just kind of like enamored by the fact that there was this massive star coming from my hometown. Um, and seeing these landmarks in the videos, you know, it definitely like brought something within me for sure. But I think for me, I was more so focused on the fact that he could rep our hometown so hard. Like he could rep it so hard that people in the States, people all over the world were referencing basically our backyard. Yeah. That was, that was pretty remarkable for me. And then like, um, this is skipping like way further ahead, but like when everybody sort of got on Afrobeat 
and more recently like does does that ring anything within you or is that just like you know like yeah yeah absolutely well i'm happy i'm happy that the world is embracing this music you know and but this music isn't new right like right even before this new wave of artists coming out we had two-face adibia we had a p square we had artists doing this before um but it just wasn't it just wasn't as packaged. accepted yeah well it wasn't packaged the same way either like what you do know, you mean in that like you could get it you could get it from spotify you can get it from um you know like when you have french montana going over there like it's right. it's that everybody sort of was like oh there is this thing that everybody says sounds good but now when you put an american face on it then yeah. it becomes like it's much accessible. more digestible yeah. and then now everybody's right. starting to see that they're now the actual african artists that like you can uh check out after that yeah yeah, well, yeah, Spotify absolutely. hired Tune Day to sort of yeah be their guy now, and they have dedicated people to to a sound that you know was literally in your backyard. Yeah, now it's everywhere. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So while you're in college, is the goal then to graduate in four years, get out and get a job, and try to establish yourself as a musical artist, or or where's your head at? Man, college was like the best time and also like the worst time. Why? For those reasons right oh there. Oh my God, so Drake. <laughs> <What? laughs> no, nah, man, no, nah, because of, because of the, because of the angst, you know, like the, you know, the existential, you know, questions you're asking yourself, like, here's a fork in the road. Which way am I going? How yeah, do oh I my know? God. You were so right college. Yeah. Huh? Yo, trust Yo. me. Trust me, man. <laughs> Trust me, I learned that word in third year, and I was like, "This applies to me right so, here." <laughs> as as far as your parents knew, like music was not on on the radar. Um, as far as they knew, but I would <laughs> I would um, someone kept telling them at work. Damn. Every time they went to work, they'd be like, hey, "So I heard you got this new thing out." I'm like, you're like, I'm popping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, like all I these like mad. troubled youths coming to your coming to your dad. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I got yeah. an audience. Yeah. So what's the first thing that really like crosses over and makes a dent and you're like, this is me and I'm I'm happy that it's getting traction? Um, so after I graduated, mm -hmm. um, I started working on uh, an EP, like a real EP. I, like I put out maybe nine mixtapes before that. Nine. Yeah. Probably like 500 people max heard all of them. So, mm -hmm. and all yeah. of them would talk to your dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they. All, it was like it was like maybe like a newsletter straight to my dad. <laughs> were you were you <laughs> utilizing like the blogs? Were you like trying to get on like Two Dope Boys or Not Right or any of those things, or were you um, just like let me just put it on my channel on YouTube and my channel on SoundCloud? My, I didn't really have a strategy okay. at the point. It was just kind of like just keep shooting your shot wherever you could so that was blogs you know um spamming you know I mean? <laughs> no, i'll be i'll be yeah, yeah. i'll yeah. be honest I, so you I were like facebook groups yeah, yeah. you were adding people on twitter being like listen to my music not following them <laughs> like that sort of thing <laughs> not that deep no no it's not that deep but, but just along a, those lines yeah, just a message to anybody who spams it's we're, a great idea. No, we're going to... And there's, there's no <laughs> downside to it. And I think everybody's become successful because of it. So. You just ruined our mentions, by the way. So thank you. Go for it. Listen. <laughs> we can't do anything for you. <laughs> I'll sign you all to It's The Real Records. Oh my God. Predatory deals only. Great. Let's so, 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 okay. So the first thing that really crosses over for you. Yeah, it was uh, a, an EP that I took my time on in creating like a solid project. You know, getting the sound right. Um, getting the themes within it right, getting the cover art, things like that. Well, what do you think was right about that project? Um, I think it was like, what was right about it was, it was the first time that I was truly vulnerable on a record from an artistic uh, standpoint, but then also from, I guess, a marketing standpoint, uh, it, was, it was well packaged. It was well packaged, well put together. It looked clean. It looks like something that you could proudly show anybody and say, this is my work. When did you bring in anybody to be part of your team? Probably when I was about to graduate from university. Uh, me and my boy, my close friend, 
uh, he's on my team right now. Um, we started a blog together when we were in school and um, just, you know, he, he would like interview up and coming artists. And then there was a point where I just kept sending him the new stuff I was working on and we were just building together and growing. And then it was just, it was just like the logical next step. It's like, yo, why don't you be my manager? Oh, you know? see, I thought at a certain point, like he had this site he was interviewing up and coming artists and then he sort of like snuck you in his own artist. Yeah. Sort of like the like ASAP. Like with Yams. Yeah yeah. 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 Like that's how ASAP oh, worked. Yeah. yeah. Like Yams, when he started his Tumblr would, you know, put all these like dope artists that he would find. And then he, you know, would sneak in Rocky, Rocky Ferg. And yeah. then it became this thing. And people were like, oh, this trusted source. I'm going to fuck with these guys. Oh, and true. look at that. <laughs> right, right, right. Like a little Trojan horse. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Right, right. So, so you guys linked up and what did that mean to your career? Well, it was like, he knew so much about other artists, right? So I was over here listening to artists who were already established. He listened to everybody. He listened to artists that I had never heard of. So he was, he helped me grow my personal artistry. You know, so I had my vision for who I wanted to be as a person yep. and as an artist yeah. as far as subject matter goes. But the other stuff, the peripheral stuff, he definitely helped me with that. And yeah, we became a team. Well, first of all, what's his name? His name's David. Shout, Shout out to, to David. David. Shout out to David. Um, and what was the best piece of advice that he gave you on that front? I don't know if there was one singular piece of advice. It was just always like I knew if I had a question about something. I knew who I could go to for that. You know, it was, you know, quicker and more efficient than a Google search. Yeah. Because he just knows a lot of stuff. After I subtract the throat, where yeah. can I bury the body? <laughs> and David would know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, David would. Shout yeah, yeah. to David. Oh, maybe. No, no, no. We're both on our, like, holistic living mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right decompose the body yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so you so you put out this project and what was the ep's name fyi for your information yeah and uh you put it out there yeah is that is that gutsy for you do you feel like you put it out there and who knows what people could say um or were you so sure of it you're like fuck it i was very sure of it and the reason why is because I had done those nine mixtapes beforehand mm -hmm. that I that maybe 500 to 1,000 people had heard. Right. And small sample size, but the consensus was, this is fire. So I was like, let's do it. And when you say you're vulnerable on, on, on FYI, what do you mean? Like I said, part of the growing process, I feel like those years where there was all that you know, turmoil going on, I learned so much about myself and I learned that in order to create great art, you need to have a certain amount of self-understanding and self-awareness Sure, for it to translate as clearly as possible to whoever is listening to it and taking it in. So you're putting, right, you're putting your experiences out there and maybe someone like you could relate to things that Drake would say. Maybe someone could hear something in what you're saying and relate to that. Were you ever afraid that you would say something on there that your parents would hear through one of these kids who stops by, you know, your dad's office and and say something where you're like, oh, I didn't even intend for my parents to hear that? Absolutely. Definitely. And it happened. Yeah. Yeah. And what was their reaction? Like it wasn't favorable, but part of the growing process for myself as an individual involved growing my relationship with them and being candid, open and transparent with them about who I was becoming. And for them to, for this to work, you need to respect that. And I respect the humanity in my parents. They respect the humanity in myself. It's a, it's a great dynamic. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. So like how long was the sort of uncertain area of like, you know, because it is a conversation. It's always evolving. But how mm. long was it where it went from like one to the other? Um, I can't really put a timeline on it. But f literally from the first 
moment that they knew that I did this rap thing until like today. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's constantly, it's constantly, yeah, um, developing. But so, we're at a great place. That's good. And where is the first uh, performance that you can look back at and be like, "Yo, I bodied that stage and felt like a true artist performing." Uh, Velvet Underground, Canadian Music Week, uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah. What was it about that performance? Canadian Music Week. I'd always wanted to perform it at it um, when I was a uh, when I was in high school when I was growing up, and I finally got that chance. Um, I opened up for Xavier Omar. And uh, it was an all live setup. So it was uh, me, uh, guitarist, drummer, and a bassist. And we played my whole EP live. And it was the most intense, surreal feeling I'd ever experienced. Was this an audience that knew the words or was it just a, a totally new audience or, or who were they? It was like 90% new audience. And then 10% were singing back with me. So are you the guy who works really hard to win them over? Or you just know that whatever you put out there, you're comfortable with them and their experience? Yeah, I just I just do what feels right to me. It's, you know, I, I don't have this conscious effort to try and win people over. It's just if you, if you resonate with it, you resonate with it. And I'm just going to give you the best thing that I can in this moment. Um, yeah. you know, going back to even before then, and maybe this is just like a universal thing, but like when you're growing as an artist, when you're putting out stuff to a very limited amount of people, and you do say that, you know, a lot of people will, will write such great things and you feel like you're on the right path. But is there anybody also who will say something that's like really shitty and that'll make you question everything? Uh, yeah, people definitely, I had a lot of naysayers, um, just on like YouTube, you yeah, know, YouTube yeah. comments. Um, but for me, like I, I see those comments, but it's just like, it's like water off a duck's back. You know, I don't, I don't regard it at all because I'm focused on the people who are impacted by my music and I don't have time to, I don't have time for the haters. You know so you're I mean? not like creating fake accounts and being <laughs> like, fuck you like you know <laughs> yeah. catch me at you know outside yeah yeah yeah, yeah no <laughs> i was gonna name some very like canadian specific shop yeah, but i yeah, only yeah. I, I wasted my cheesecake my, factory yeah i already wasted yeah. all my references all good all yeah. good no no that's that's never the case because it's for me it's never that deep like i don't have time for that you know i have time for the people who who love what i do so what happens after that that performance in 2017 um that it, it's, uh, it was a series of cementing what music really meant to me. And that was definitely a highlight for me because I knew I was made for this on that night. That night cemented it for me. Did you have a job, a regular nine to five? Yes. What were you doing? A uh, child and youth worker. Wow. Yeah, a mental health worker. Did any of your uh, worlds collide or cross over at any point? Did any of your kids like end up seeing you perform did anybody hear about the music did your co-workers say like you know there was a guy who was spitting something nasty and it sounded like you have you heard it yet and you're just like oh yeah i've heard of that <laughs> yeah yeah to be honest with you that's happened a couple times I, it's it's always it's been kind of difficult to toe that line mm -hmm. you know with a raising profile in the city but still people know you as something else you know um, so I've learned to be as transparent as possible with the different spaces that I occupy, but also like, I don't expect people to be treating me any differently, you know, like it, is, it is what it is. It's a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Right. And when a kid finds out, it actually helps with relationship building and helps build rapport if they are interested in making music. So, you know, you start building buzz and, you know, Toronto is popping at this point. And so are there any execs who are like coming into town? Is there anybody where where do you start seeing the industry side of things start coming into your life? In Toronto, like it was definitely popping, but some some spaces were still kind of siloed and exclusive a little bit. Like, you know, as a artist who doesn't really have a name, it's hard to get in those rooms. So 
I kind of took it from a twofold approach. One, working from the ground on mm-hmm. the under, underground. So open mics, you know, things like that, like battle forums, you know, stuff like that. And then secondly, just reaching out to people who are in the industry, but they're also champions of local music. So it's, it starts with those champions first, like at least my foray into and, the industry. And so those people were who? Um, Aaron, uh, this uh, editor for a magazine, uh, mm-hmm. Exclaim Magazine. Mm-hmm. Her name's Aaron Lowers. Mm-hmm. She's really and been a champion for... Exclaim.ca or whatever, right? Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but she, she also does so many different things, right? She wears many hats. A lot of Toronto... Uh, professionals in the industry they wear many hats and they have you know different gigs essentially and how does your music find its way to uh madison avenue and uh ultimately to same plate um it was through putting music out and reaching out online to everybody under the sun you know like the blog the blog uh, reach outs and things like that. And then um, growing that organically. Uh, then I uh, uh, met with uh, John Tanners. Um, who, the A&R, yep. Yeah, who then uh, came on to be on my management um, as well. And then the growth was from there, you know, took it to another level, also artistically. Um, and then my music got in the hands of John at St. Plate. And he loved the music, uh, reached out to me. And um, yeah, we just kept building from there. And it was it was just a great, great fit. So when like all this attention starts coming to you after this like label deal, deal starts getting put together, talk about your mind state at that point. Because you're somebody who's been, you put out nine mixtapes, right. 500 people listen to them. You put out one mixtape that more people listen to. You got some live performances off of that. But like now you're getting like a whole building right. and there's like a very different energy that comes with that. So like what you're, you're just, you know, a kid who's living, you know, uh, 500, 600 miles away. Right. You know, talk about your mind state at that point. Um, at that point, I've always just kind of learned to be grateful and appreciative of where you are, no matter where that is, and always have that foresight of where you know, where things could go or Mm -hmm. where you want things to go. So, you know, part of me always kind of acts like it never happened. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want it to deter me from the bigger picture and, you know, be in the clouds, right? Um, So I I still feel like I'm that dude on the Sony Ericsson still recording. Every yeah, time now I you're signed studio. to a Sony label. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not a it's not a Sony Ericsson anymore, but you know, it's like I can't I can't lose that I can't lose that feeling. Do you no. still have have things to say that are open and honest and vulnerable and and push your own limits? Absolutely, yeah. I, it's um it's part of the growing process for me. Like this project that I'm working on right now that I can't wait for the world to hear marks a period of my life that is very clearly stated for me very clearly stated a lot has happened since then and a lot is going to keep happening yeah as i'm sure of it right yeah. but but okay so you sign a major label deal you end up in these rooms with the game and working with all these different people right you're you're a more known entity can you look back at at that chapter and go back into your own soul and feel like the man who wrote those songs. Oh, God, that's a bar. That's a bar. (laughs) (laughs) That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a question, man. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely have to do, uh, self-reflection, you know, it needs to be a daily process. So, you know, I can't, I need to be able to reference where I'm at right now versus where I was in the past. And I think that's the beauty of listening to music from an artist and knowing where they were chronologically is you can you can say, oh, this is where they were at this time, this is where they were at this time. And then the audience, the listener can piece these stories together. I got a lot of stories to tell 
very interesting stories, very um, emotionally trying stories. But, you know, I think if I can, if I can use myself as a reference point, well, it's going to make for a pretty awesome run. I also saw uh, that Jesse J follows you on Instagram. Jesse J, the British singer? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, no way. Okay, dope. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that till just so now. So if you want to like DM her, go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to holler. <laughs> um, who do you make music for? Oh, man. Who do I make music for? First and foremost... I make it for I make it for me. Yeah. Um, Thank you for saying that. Yeah. There's so many people who are just like, you know, I make it for Brampton. I make it for, you know, uh, Nigeria. I make it for Wait, but were you about to say all those things? Um if yes. you, if I was to get like an yes. extended if I was to get <laughs> yes. like an extended answer, to. it's okay. It's like, no, but, but <laughs> I make it for me. No, that but that's what it is first and foremost. You know, like when Snoop was like uh, getting his uh, star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame and he said, I wanna thank a lot of people, but really I want to thank me. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, thank yeah, yourself. Yeah. This is your journey. This is your story. You have written this. You've made it. You've accomplished these things. You are here. It's you. Right. So good for you for saying that. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. On, on everything. We're really excited about what's to happen. And for somebody who is, you know, great at dividing people's throats, yeah. we're excited about you multiplying your audience. So. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Look thanks, at that. Thanks so much for, for stopping by and, uh, and we'll hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks everyone for listening to this new episode of A Waste Time with the Real Jeff. People want to find out more about us. I'm Eric, curly hair, your Jeff, glasses together. We are It's The Real, no apostrophe, no spaces. This podcast, of course, is called A Waste of Time with It's The Real. At this point, I think you should know that that's the name of the podcast, but whatever, whatever. And if you guys want to find out more about what's going on with this movement of ours, Jeff, where can they go? You can always go to itstherreal.com. Go sign up for that newsletter. Yeah. It's still free today. Yeah. Tomorrow, not so free. <laughs> today is free. That's right. You can also go to itstherreal.com slash shop and get all of our mugs, all of our t-shirts, all of those It's The Real supplies that you desperately need. They're there. They're there right now. They're there right now. You're here right now. Go get them over there. You can listen to all of our old episodes and our new ones of our podcast, A Waste of Time with It's The Real. That's this podcast. Yeah. Go to iTunes. Go to Spotify. Go to SoundCloud and CastBox. And Google Play and the rest. And any place that you want to listen to podcasts and many more, our podcast is there. A Waste of Time with It's The Real. Just search for It's The Real. A Waste of Time with It's The Real. If that's too complicated. <laughs> you can also find two Jews and two black dudes. Review the movies. Our side podcast with the locks. That's should everywhere. A, yeah, should be making a return soon. Right. You can also find us on social media. At It's The Real on Twitter. At It's The Real on Facebook. At It's The Real on Instagram. Jeff, now is the time when we ask the internet to check in so we can shout you guys out. We appreciate you for listening. We appreciate you for being involved on social media. So here it is, Jeff. Who... Wants to be shouted out today. Angry Man from Baltimore. Shouts to him. Cron Artest. I also want to shout out Shonda Nicole One from Newark. Or Newark. I'm not sure if she's from Delaware. Ooh. Shout out to Brooke from Oakland, California. That's the Brooklyn Basquiat. Shout out to Dwayne Hall the first. Cam from Chicago. BJ from New Orleans. Sam from Brooklyn. That's Fly Young Sam. I want to shout out 3 Piece Set Pod out of Atlanta. I want to shout out... I want to shout out Shake Skates from Denver. We're going to actually be out in Denver at the end of the month. Check us out. I want to shout out OG245 from Boston. Long time, long time. I want to shout out Emmanuel Fresh. I want to shout out Andy Patel from Austin, Texas. Sound from Providence, Rhode Island. I want to shout out John from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pike Romero from Tucson, Arizona. So hi, the Compton native Charlotte resident. I want to shout out Will from Philly. I want to shout out Jonathan from Boston. I have not been back to Boston since I graduated. I want to shout out Jeff from Los Angeles. I want to shout out Jabari Sampson. The Fat Quagmire from D.C. I want to shout out Renzel Washington from Birmingham. 
possibly from Alabama, probably from England. I want to shout out Dirty Water Podcast from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Shout out to them. I want to shout out Anthony, a.k.a. Continental Breakfast from Norwich, Connecticut. The Rose of New England. I don't know if he's saying that he's the Rose of New England or if North Connecticut is. You know what? They both are. Give them roses while they're around, right? TJ from Jersey City. And I also want to shout out Josh from Three Rivers, Michigan. Shout out to all you guys for checking in. Shout out to everybody who's listening. And shout out to everybody who's letting everybody else know that A Waste of Time with The Real is your third favorite podcast. Jeff, as always, not for real, for real. Sure, sure. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.